For the first time, we can report both parties each now have a presumptive nominee. Haley's exit from the race after Trump's wins last night tees up a Biden-Trump rematch. So even though we love our election music, we might need to change it to something more fitting. Yeah, one more time. Remember that one as the song goes? One more time as we do this matchup, although we should know most Americans would prefer someone else. New choices. People are not celebrating as they did in the Daft Punk classic. And there's a lot of commentary and merch making a similar point. If you go back across history, losing candidates don't usually make another run at the White House. Losing presidents rarely ask the electorate to give them another chance which is why there's a teddy bear on your screen. You'd have to go back to the original inspiration for the teddy bear for an example of a former president running again, like when former president Teddy Roosevelt ran for the old job he had against the current president, Taft. It was dubbed the Great Mustache Election of 1912. Trump is hoping for a different outcome than that former president who lost in what was a three-way race to Wilson. Now, we should know Democrats keep beating expectations in recent elections. Strong midterms in 2022. The 2018 blue wave. Biden, of course, beating Trump in 2020. But the Electoral College actually makes things much closer. Consider, as we're now in this Daft Punk rematch, that Trump first won the Electoral College with three close states and a combined margin, you see right there, of 77,000. Seven million more Americans chose Biden last time, of course, but in the three closest states that cycle, his total margin was also super narrow, coming in around 42,000 in Arizona, Wisconsin, and Georgia combined. So, yes, it's one more time for this standoff with many Americans telling us they're over it before it even begins. Now, as promised, I want to welcome back James and tell you, James... Uh, in your honor, we want to tell you this is a special day that we are inaugurating today, and we hope it repeats. We're calling it James Day. You can see the new graphic there with you and other presidents and you throughout the years. Uh, welcome back, sir. Welcome to James Day. Well, well, thank you. What an honor to have a day named after me. <laughs> right? We're not the <laughs> government, but... It's a day that lives in infamy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, FDR, I hope not. Uh, we'll, we'll make yeah. it live in wisdom. Um, there we go. I played Daft Punk. A lot of people remember that classic song. One more time, we're going to celebrate because the song's about people wanting to celebrate again. I know you love Mardi Gras and music and celebrations. Right. I think you also know the facts. And on both sides, there's a lot of people who aren't ushering in this one more time. So with that mood, what do you see coming out of Super Tuesday? What's important? What are you watching? What do you say to that? Well, the polling is discouraging. It's a little bit like walking on your grandma naked. It's hard to unsee them. I mean, it's, it's, but there are some things that are in, in President Biden's favor. Trump is, is, is massively unpopular also. And I saw something today in the Tom Etzel column that fascinated me. 45% of Americans don't know anything or very little about the charges against Trump. So to me, that, says, that tells me there's a, a knowledge vacuum out there. Usually when you have two incumbents, everything is known about both of them, and it's, it, it's kind of hard to move numbers. But I thought that was encouraging. And this, you know, this trial coming up on March 25th is going to be a pretty big event. People, I think, are, are, are downplaying that. And I, I, I think if, if, he gets, if he's acquitted or hung jury, it's going to give his people a big boost and a lot of energy. However, you well know that once you're convicted of a felony, your entire life changes. I mean, you, you, you don't have the same day. You have to give up your passport. You got to get permission to travel. It probably won't jail him pending appeal. But it, when you're convicted, it, to, it, that, it's a different world that he's going to live in. And uh, so I, I, I think we're going to have to pay sufficient attention to that. I don't know if the legal process is going to save us or, or a lot of people try to believe that, but there's a lot of knowledge to fill in that the, the Democrats and President Biden can do that I think can help some. We need help. And I'm, I'm not sugarcoating this thing at all. Hmm. We, we're, we're, we're not in an advantageous position right now. Interesting to hear you put it like that, starkly. Uh, we showed old James agreeing with new James, current James. 
uh, that polls only take you so far. Uh, we, we saw that in the clip. Um, but last night, we got a lot of results. I was telling vo uh, uh, viewers that we heard from more states with more voters last night than any other point this year, uh, and big states. So the population represented last night was roughly over 40 percent of America. Uh, and so I'm curious what you make of what they're saying. Biden's not running with real strong opponents, but uh, we're seeing numbers that rival the Obama reelection numbers in terms of his unifying the Democratic Party, even amidst the, the issues you mentioned. Uh, and we see Trump putting up numbers that got Haley out, um, but don't yet show party unity. Uh, what do you take from the numbers last night? Well, I don't take, I mean, they both had command and leads all the way through. Uh, uh, President Biden did not have, you know, very much opposition. Haley, you know, ran a gutsy campaign. She got 25, 30 percent in a lot of places. But all right, this is what I, I really think. We're going to have a hard time replicating the 2020 coalition, particularly mm. among under 30 and non-white. And for President Biden to come back to win this thing, we're going to have to do better with kind of middle voters, swing voters, loosely aligned, which the good news is we are doing that. We're not winning elections on turnout. We're actually winning elections with, I, I don't know, a better word than swing voters. I'd say less hardly aligned voters we're doing pretty well with. And we, that, I see that across the board. We're going to have to do that. We cannot rely on Democratic turnout to carry the day for us. It's, I don't, I don't, it, it's, it's striking to hear you now. say that, because, James, the under 30 was uh, the single uh, largest uh, gap, largest edge right. Biden had demographically over Trump last time. Well, black voters, for, for sure, but the, 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 the black numbers are, are, are tepid. I mean, we got to address that. And I don't, I don't know if it's possible to replicate the 2020. And the under 30 is decidedly unenthusiastic or detached right now. I mean, hmm. that's pretty clear. Now, the, what, what I'm sure the White House would say is, look, they, and at the end of the day, they're going to come back. The question is, did they come back in sufficient numbers with sufficient turnout? I, I'm, I, I just don't think we can rely on the same coalition uh, this November as we did November four years ago. I, I really don't. Hmm. I, I'd, I'd like to be proven wrong, trust me. No, I know you would, uh, but we appreciate your candor and people at the White House and the Biden campaign would be concerned about what you're saying because uh, that, that was part of the coalition. First time voters, young voters, and as you say, uh, a lot of black and brown Democratic voters and uh, soft sporadics who basically said, yeah, we got to do this, got to stop Trump and COVID didn't help Trump. Um, on the Republican side, though, again, we're trying to do both here and, uh, and right, be right. accurate. I want to show you the numbers I mentioned earlier in the broadcast. This is before you joined us. This was before... Uh, probably both of the old school clips I play to you, James. Uh, Nikki Haley won 25 percent of the vote here in 11 states this cycle. That's new numbers from last night. Uh, the support for Haley in critical swing states mentioned uh, even higher than other places. Then we have limited exit polling. This is just from a couple of places. But where the question was asked, and this has to do with sort of how they how they poll it, they didn't do it everywhere. But in the states selected, pretty strong uh, a uh, third of uh, those voters saying they're not going to back the GOP nominee in November, which we discussed this last night with Rachel and Lawrence and everyone, that's understood to refer to Trump. Uh, Biden now saying, quote, Trump made it clear he doesn't want Haley's supporters. I want to be clear there's a place for them in my campaign. <laughs> James? Oh, oh, please, please, is there a place for yeah, you? That... <laughs> we, we need these. We need these voters. And, and I I, I've never. I, I got to say, Trump says things that I've never heard anyone say before. I've never heard a politician. Maybe somebody point out. Say, I don't want these voters. I mean, yeah, <laughs> usually wild. politicians are like, yeah, go, sure, come on, welcome to the party. Uh, it, he's he, he's weak, and uh, that that's the encouraging part. He's weak, and he's not. He's not. He says some of the. He's getting increasingly crazy. I, I, I don't. I don't know how to judge it. I'm not a psychiatrist or, or anything like that. But he's always been said a lot of really stupid things, but he looks like he's increasing. And we're going to need that. We're going to need those Haley voters. We're going to need Trump to 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 make a, a, a lot of gaffes. And, you know, we're going to need to catch up. So what do Democrats say good. to those Haley voters? That you you don't want a, a criminal in the White House. You don't want somebody who it looks to a lot of people was treasonous, that was uh, colluding with, with, with Putin, that was showing national security documents, that was disobeying 
uh, not responding to legally legal subpoenas and requests from the archives. Uh, that a uh, guy that's got uh, adjudicated by a jury to have sexually assaulted, in the words of the judge, raped a woman. Uh, people don't know that. It was adjudicated by the, the court of law as being a business fraud of the first order, to the extent that he was ordered to pay like four hundred something million dollars, and they had a receiver that that is now in charge of his properties in New York City. So there's a lot. There's a lot of information there that these. Loosely aligned voters don't have yet, and a lot of these voters were Haley voters that don't like Trump. She was getting 30 percent, 35 percent. Just put the numbers on there. Those are those are terrible numbers for some for an president who's in effect an incumbent. So his weakness is real, and it, it it has to be exploited. And there's a lot of wet work left to do, if you know what I mean.